Welcome again to my YouTube channel, Dirty Teachers. For today's video, we're going to discuss the part 3 of Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. So, today we're going to discuss Article 7 and 8. But before we start, please like and share, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Teacher V. So, natapos na natin na i-discuss yung part 1, yung article 1, 2, and 3. And then, sa part 2, na-discuss na rin natin yung article 4, 5, and 6. So, for today's video, we're going to continue the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Ito naman ang i-discuss natin ay article 7, School Officials, Teachers, and Other Personnel. And article 8, The Teacher and Learners. 7. School officials, teachers, and other personnel. Section 1. All school officials shall at all times show professional courtesy, helpfulness, and sympathy towards teachers and other personnel. Such practices being standards of effective school supervision, dignified administration, and responsible leadership, and enlightened direction. So, sa section one, ng Article 7, lahat ng school officials, lalo na tayong mga teachers, dapat marunong tayong gumalang sa kapwa natin. Maging mabait at matulungin tayo sa mga kasamahan natin, lalo na sa mga bagong pasok, or kahit na sa mga matagal na nating kasama. Lalo na yung mga kasamahan nating non-teaching personnel, and even sa mga parents and students na nakakasalamuhan natin, dahil isa ito sa pamantayan ng pagiging effective leader natin. Section 2. School officials, teachers, and other personnel shall consider it their cooperative responsibility to formulate policies or introduce important changes in the system at all levels. Sa Section 2, lahat ng school officials, mapateaching or non-teaching personnel man, dapat may cooperation tayo sa paggawa ng mga policies na ipinapatupad sa school para Pare-pareho tayo ng explanation kapag may nagtanong tayo sa atin tungkol sa policy na ito. Section 3. School officials shall encourage and attend the professional growth of all teachers under them, such as recommending them for promotion, giving them due recognition for meritorious performance, and allowing them to participate in conferences in training programs. So, ito yung lagi kong sinasabi sa mga kasamahan ko sa department namin. Uh, ituloy nila ang pag-aaral nila sa master's and doctorate degree, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, mahirap ma-promote kapag hindi ka nagtuloy ng pag-aaral or kahit wala ka man lang na ilang, uh, ilang units na uh, required doon sa uh, promotion. And yung pag-attend ng mga seminars, we should encourage them to attend Kahit na minsan may mga bayad, pero meron naman tayo sa public schools na mga seminars na hindi naman nila kailangang magbayad. We need to encourage them para sa professional growth din naman nila. And we need to give recognition then dun sa mga teachers, lalo na kapag may mga hawak silang centers. And kung nagpa-perform naman talaga sila ng maayos sa inyong department, bigyan natin sila ng recognition para magamit din nila yun sa promotion nila. Section 4. No school officials shall dismiss or recommend for dismissal a teacher or other subordinates except for cause. Sa section 4, for example, may kasalanan ng teacher, ang principal po ay walang power na mag-dismiss sa kanya or mag-recommend ng dismissal ni teacher. Kagaya nga ng nakalagay sa Article 5, Section 1, when the best interest of the learners, the school, or the profession is at stake in any controversy, the teacher shall support one another. Section 5. School authorities concerned shall ensure that public school teachers are employed in accordance with pertinent civil service rules and private school teachers are issued contracts specifying the terms and conditions of their work, provided that they are given, if qualified, subsequent permanent tenure in accordance with existing laws. 
So dito sa Section 5, sinisiguro ng mga school authorities na lahat ng mga teachers ay nagtatrabaho according to civil service rules. Ang mga private schools naman ay may sinusunod din na rules and regulation na nakalagay sa kontrata nila. Article 8, The Teachers and Learners, Section 1. A teacher has a right and duty to determine the academic marks and the promotions of learners in the subject or grades he handles. Such determination shall be in accordance with generally accepted procedures of evaluation and measurement. In case of any complaint, teachers concerned shall immediately take appropriate actions of serving due process. So, sa Section 1 ng Article 8, always remember to keep the records of your students. Ang pagbibigay ng grades at ang promotion ng students ay obligasyon at trabaho talaga nating mga teachers. But please, be fair din sa mga students natin. We need to discuss the grading system before the start of the school year para alam din nila paano natin sila binibigyan ng grades. And if may reklamo ang parent about the grades of their children, ay may maipapakita tayong evidences yung ating class record. Section 2. A teacher shall recognize that the interest and welfare of learners are of first and foremost concerns and shall deal justifiably and impartially with each of them. So, sa section 2, dapat nating tandaan na ang kapakanan ng mga students natin ang ating isna sa alang-alang palagi. Dapat, pantay-pantay ang trato natin sa kanila. Tayo namang teachers, I know naman na kahit minsan nakukulitan na tayo sa ibang students natin, but we are making sure naman na hindi natin yung tinitake uh, personally. Section 3. Under no circumstance shall a teacher be prejudiced nor discriminated against by the learner. So, sa section 3, sa anumang pagkakataon, dapat hindi tayo na discriminate ng ating mga student. Respect should always be there and same din tayo sa mga students natin. Section 4, a teacher shall not accept favors or gifts from learners their parents or others in their behalf in exchange for requested concessions, especially if undeserved. So, sa section 4, as teacher, dapat hindi tayo tatanggap na anumang regalo mula sa mga uh, students natin or dun sa mga parents ng students natin, lalo na kapag ito ay may hinihinging kapalit. Next, section 5, a teacher shall not accept directly or indirectly any remuneration from tutorials other what is authorized for such service. Sa section 5, lalo na sa mga public schools, ipinagbabawal na tumanggap tayo ng bayad from tutorials, lalo na kapag mismong student natin ang itututor natin. Kasi ang public schools naman ay may mga remedial classes for those students who needed it. Section 6. A teacher shall base the evaluation of the learner's work only in merit and quality of academic performance. So, sa Section 6, kaya meron tayong sinusunod na grading system at may rubrics tayong binibigay sa ating mga students kapag may papagawa tayo sa kanila dahil dito tayo nagbibase ng pag-evaluate sa performance nila inside the classroom. Section 7. In a situation where mutual attraction and subsequent love develop between teacher and learner, the teacher shall exercise utmost professional discretion to avoid the scandal, gossip, and preferential treatment of the learner. So, dito sa Section 7, bawal ang magkaroon ng relasyon ng teacher and student, lalo na kapag mismo ang student niya or Kahit hindi niya student, pero pareho sila ng school na pinapasukan. That's all for today, dear teachers. Please watch the last part of explanation for Articles 9 to 13 of Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers on my next video. Again, don't forget to like and share. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Teacher V. Bye!